We've all heard the success stories. Couples who have found their happily ever after through apps like Tinder. But for every romantic encounter, there is a far darker reality lurking behind the screens. Predators with sinister intent, setting traps for unsuspecting victims. Catfish luring people in with fake profiles, their true motives unclear. For Marissa, a fun night out nearly ended in disaster when the Tinder match she was supposed to meet turned out to be something far more terrifying. The Catfish Abduction Marissa was a 23-year-old graduate student living in a small college town. After a recent breakup, she decided to give Tinder a try to get back into the dating scene. One night, a profile caught her eye. 25-year-old Luke. His pictures showed a handsome, athletic guy with a bright smile that made him seem friendly and approachable. After a few days of casual messaging, Luke suggested meeting up that weekend when he would have his apartment to himself. When Luke asked where Marissa lived, alarm bells immediately went off in her mind. But she brushed her doubts aside, assuming she was just being paranoid. They exchanged numbers and the conversation quickly turned flirty. That Saturday evening, Marissa set off full of excited nerves to the address Luke had given her. As she approached the block, she slowed, confusion setting in. The house sat dark, two unfamiliar vehicles parked in the driveway. This didn't match Luke's story at all. Unease growing, Marissa texted Luke that she had arrived early and would wait for his signal. She began walking slowly away when sudden headlights flooded the street. A white van with the lights off turned onto the road, rolling to a stop a few houses down. The driver killed the engine and silence engulfed the neighborhood. Adrenaline spiking, Marissa sprinted to the nearest yard, hiding in the shadows. Moments later, her phone dinged with a message from Luke. Come to the house. I'm ready. Marissa fled. Her worst fears confirmed. She had almost walked into a predator's trap. She quickly reported the fake profile to Tinder before blocking Luke's number. Grateful, she had listened to her instincts. The Park Predators. Maddie was a broke college student, constantly struggling to make ends meet. So when she came across a strange Tinder profile one night offering to pay for help playing a prank on some guy, her interest was piqued. The job? Kick a man named David in the groin while he was being recorded. The pay? A hundred dollars. It seemed simple enough. The person coordinating the attack was Chelsea, David's pissed-off ex-girlfriend. Chelsea claimed it was payback for David cheating on her. While Maddie thought the whole thing seemed excessive, a hundred dollars was a hundred dollars. They agreed to meet at 10 p.m. the next night. When Maddie arrived at the location, a dilapidated shed behind an abandoned house. It was immediately obvious something wasn't right. The space was littered with old furniture and tools strewn about haphazardly. In the corner was a grimy mattress laid out on the concrete floor. No filming equipment was set up and there was no sign of David or Chelsea. Before Maddie could react, a scrawny, unkempt man emerged from the shadows. Alarm bells blared in Maddie's mind. She needed to get out of there, but the cash she had to get paid first. Trying to hide her unease, she asked for the money. The man silently handed her a hundred dollars and gestured for her to wait. As Maddie's panic rose, she noticed a phone set up nearby, recording. Had she just been lured into some kind of snuff film fantasy? She didn't wait to find out. Clutching the cash, she sprinted from that nightmarish shed, vowing to never ignore warning signs again. She had escaped danger, but only by the skin of her teeth. She vowed to never ignore warning signs again. But not everyone is so lucky when venturing into online dating. 18-year-old Jeremy learned that lesson the hard way when he nearly found himself on the receiving end of a midnight chaser from an online imposter. The midnight chaser. To Jeremy, it had seemed innocent enough. He was home on summer break after finishing his freshman year of college. When he came across a familiar face on Tinder, Mia, a girl from his high school class. They struck up a conversation and soon made plans to meet up later that night at an empty parking lot near Jeremy's neighborhood. Jeremy arrived first, parking beneath one of the bright overhead lamps. He drummed his fingers on the steering wheel as he watched the minutes tick by past their meeting time. Finally, a pair of headlights cut through the darkness as another car pulled up. Jeremy stepped out, squinting at the unfamiliar vehicle, a small sedan. That's not Mia's car, he thought, unease prickling his skin. 
the other car's engine shut off and the lights went out, leaving Jeremy blinking spots from his vision. The driver's side door creaked open, and for a heart-stopping moment, all Jeremy could discern was a looming shadow. Before he could react, the shadow drew closer, and Jeremy found himself sprinting through the parking lot with the driver giving chase. Jeremy scrambled to his car and locked the doors, breathless, as the driver pounded angrily on his window before giving up and returning to their vehicle. Jeremy peeled out of the parking lot, hands shaking as he drove. When he arrived home, he had a DM waiting for Mia, the real Mia. Someone had been using her pictures to catfish people. Jeremy felt lucky to have escaped unharmed as the reality sank in that sometimes danger wears a familiar face, hiding in plain sight online. The balcony murder. Gable was fascinated by Warina the moment he spotted her profile on Tinder with her long dark hair and olive skin. A freelance photographer by trade, her photos displayed an alluring girl-next-door beauty. After a few flirty conversations via text, they planned their first date, drinks at a lively restaurant downtown. The alcohol flowed freely and the pair hit it off immediately. When Warina ended up going back to Gable's high-rise apartment as the night wore on, she thought she was getting lucky by meeting such an attractive, charismatic guy. But her luck was about to take a deadly turn. In the dark hours of the early morning after their tryst, the neighbors were awakened by the sounds of a violent argument spilling from Gable's apartment onto the balcony. The sounds of shouting soon turned to horrific screams. By the time the police arrived, it was too late. Warina was dead, her broken body lying on the pavement below Gable's 14th-story balcony. Questioned by detectives, Gable insisted Warina's plunge was an accident that she had been trying to climb down to escape after their dispute turned physical. But the autopsy told a different story. The evidence pointed to Gable choking Warina unconscious before tossing her limp body over the railing. His camera equipment would reveal the chilling truth. In the last moments of her life, Gable had photographed his Tinder date, wanting to capture the moment just before taking it. The Buried Backpacker. Halfway across the world in New Zealand, a young backpacker named Grace was ready for adventure. Grace was an outgoing 22-year-old English woman who had embarked on a globe-trotting journey after university. A social butterfly, she embraced every new location and experience with vivacious excitement. Grace had recently arrived in Auckland after spending time exploring the exotic paradise of Fiji. At her hostel, she hit it off immediately with two other backpackers, an outgoing hippie couple who invited the sweet, bubbly girl to join them on a hike. The trio became fast friends, strands of friendship bonding them together. One night at the hostel's lively bar, Grace's new friends watched eagerly over her shoulder as she swiped through Tinder. Grace had always loved meeting new people, and for a friendly extrovert like herself, dating apps held endless possibilities. As she showed off matches and messaged various locals, her friends encouraged her flirtations. When Grace matched with Jesse, a ruggedly handsome young man with a disarming smile, she knew she had found someone alluring. After a bit of playful banter over messaging, they decided to meet up the following evening at a popular casino bar downtown. Grace spent the afternoon picking the perfect date outfit as her friends helped hype her up for the night ahead. They could see her visibly blossoming with anticipation for her first Kiwi date. The evening of the date, Grace's friends watched her almost skip out of the hostel, clearly enthused. At the trendy bar, she and Jesse appeared to hit it off effortlessly. Surveillance cameras caught them laughing, flirting, even kissing as the night wore on. Their chemistry was undeniable. When closing time came, they wandered tipsily out onto the neon-lit streets. Jesse enticingly invited Grace back to his nearby apartment. Feeling hopeful and enchanted, Grace readily agreed. Linking arms, the seeming lovebirds strolled off into the darkness. It was the last image ever captured of Grace's smiling face. The next morning, her bed lay untouched. Her travel items were still scattered across the room. She had never made it back from her dream date. And soon, the nightmare would emerge. For Marissa, Maddie, Jeremy, Warina and Grace, Swiping right led to outcomes ranging from deeply unsettling to deadly. They are just a few frightening examples of pursuits for online affection gone awry at the hands of unscrupulous predators, targeting dating app connections. When venturing into online dating, caution is always advised when engaging with matches who are still strangers. Keep initial meetups public, 
listen to instincts if something seems off, and maintain vigilance about sharing private details. On that wholesome note, let me know in the comments below which bone-chilling story was your favorite. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss next week's disturbing true tales.